The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. This is what he said, Numbers 22, 5. A people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Next to me means that you are going to be the next prey. Because they have been striking down nations. Their God is so powerful. He said they are next to me. So he knows that so far as these people are concerned, his nation will not stand. So he calls Balaam to come and then curse them. Verse 17 says this. Come and put a curse on these people for me. <laughs> now Balaam tried because he loved money. Then he says that these people are blessed and they cannot be cursed. He didn't say you can't curse them. They cannot be cursed. Then Balak said, no, maybe it is where you are standing. You don't see them properly. So Balaam changed his position. And any time that he opened his mouth to curse, he saw himself speaking blessings on the people. That is who we are. If this is Israel, what about us? People endured by the power and spirit of God. You don't have any idea to be one of us, the people of God. Hmm. Chapter 23 says this in verse 9. From the rocky peak, I see them. From the heights, I view them. I see a people who live apart and do not consider themselves one of the nations. When you are a people of God, we want you to live apart. Don't be like them. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the godly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, because we are not like them. Don't be equally yoked with them. He says these people, they live a part of the nations. That is what it means to be one of us, a people of God, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Chosen by God, one of us. 24. I like the 24 of chapter 23, Numbers. The people rise, the people of God. The people rise like lioness. They rouse themselves like a lion that does not rest till he devours his prey and drinks the blood. Of his victims. <laughs> now, if you are part of this group, you don't have to be afraid of witches. This is how they are describing the people of God. The people rise like a lioness, a female lion. She is always looking for food for the pride. They rouse themselves like a lion. That does not rest till he devours his prey and drains the blood of his victims. Balak is shivering. Because if these lions are around you, they would, they would devour you. Sometimes we, we, we are afraid of things that we shouldn't be afraid of. When we come to church, don't let us deceive Satan too much. Let him rest. Eh? We have been disturbing him too much. That she should have oh no 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 no. But when we come to church, let us bind, let us do this. Now listen, there's something better than binding and losing. When we come to church, 
una menye china wo wonko so na me nita una menye menye china wo yesu e wonko so na me on the outside the Bible says their rock is not like our rock even our enemies they know that don't let us be feeble don't come here and scare us somebody will just come and stand here say you see we have to bind ancestral case ancestral words the Bible says if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old is gone. The new has come. Amen. This is scripture. Don't let anybody come here and tell us our Nancy stories. They, oh, they, they want to scare us so that we perpetually go to them for prayer meetings so they can take money from us. They are not serving us. They are serving their stomach. This is scripture. You have to let the lion you roar. Put fear. The lion is the king of the jungle. Put fear into the antelopes. Don't let any antelope come and disturb us. You don't know who you are. Ao fade o pra. Ale. My rich and oh, 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 when we came to church, we looked for nothing. We sought nothing but the power of the Holy Ghost. We drank it. We bathed it. And then when we are charged, let them come and disturb us. They will see that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are a people of God. A holy nation. A people of God. The book of us says that these are the people who have turned the world upside down. They have come to this town too. That is how people should see us. We are not weaklings at all. Because the whole Christ is in you. We are not weaklings at all. But somebody should teach you that. Otherwise, you may not know who you are. The apostle Paul says, thank God. He says, I didn't know. But now I know, Father, thank you. You see, the apostle Paul was a Pharisee. One of the greatest Pharisees. And Deuteronomy 21, 23 says this. You must not leave the body hanging on the pole overnight. Be sure to bury it that same day. Because anyone who hangs on a pole or on a tree is under God's curse. 
You must not desecrate the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. This is scripture. And this is Old Testament scripture. And Paul believed this one. That anyone that is hung on the tree is cursed. And then Peter and Co. are saying that this cursed man is the Messiah. Then he says, what? So he thought they were wrong. And he persecuted the church. He was zealous for his God until Jesus apprehended him on the way to Damascus. He was surprised about the name he heard. Because when he was struck, he says, who are you, Lord? Because he believed he was working for the Lord. And then, the name that came out surprised him. I am Jesus. The one you are persecuting. The Bible says that when Ananias prayed for him, something like scales fell from his eyes. I pray today in the name of Jesus that any scales on your eyes be removed that you will see him and know him so that you can interpret him better to other people. The entrance of his word will bring liberty. Some do not know. That is why they still want to go for anointing oil. If the blood of Jesus cannot save you, what will olive oil do for you? May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you will know the hope of which you have been called. The incomparably great power that is available for us who believe. It is available for us who believe. Later on, this is what Paul said. Christ was made a curse for us. That we will become the righteousness of God. Because now he knows that when he hung on the tree, not knowing that he was substituting for all of us the Gentiles. And then instead of persecuting the church, this is the testimony that was written about him. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praise God because of me. This is the Apostle Paul. Now they heard that this fellow who was trying to destroy the faith is now preaching the gospel more than us. And the Bible says, they praise God because of me. Because of Paul. Now the scripture we read, the maiden one says this, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. God's special possession. The Bible says we have been sealed a seal. You see, because we belong to God, he has marked us with a seal. Amen. Ephesians 1, 12, 13 says that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. You, you see, you never know who you are. When you are walking among the marketplace, when you are walking among some other people, and you have really gotten yourself filled with the Spirit of God, that mark must be seen. He has marked all of us out as people of God. And then he says that we have to declare the praise of him who loved us to the world. And the apostle Paul says that because of me, they praise God. I pray that because of you, they will praise God. Because of me, they praise God. I want to say this, but I want you to hold it into your spirit. The Christian life is one of spiritual courage and determination. Lived out of the flesh as a result of revelation. You see, the Christian life is one of spiritual courage and determination. That we live out of this flesh when we have revelation. Paul says that I know now and now he is bold to defend Jesus. The other time, 
He was bold to kill the people that belonged to the way. Jesus, his people. But now, when the light came, and he had the revelation, now he's bold to live for what he knows. To live for what he knows. One of our greatest challenge is those who teach us. He will cause you to be afraid of witches. The Bible says God gave gifts to men. He gave apostles. He gave prophets. He gave evangelists. He gave pastors. He gave teachers. And all of us. For the perfecting of the saints. I like that one. Than the equipping the saints. You see the perfecting means that. There are certain things in you. He's only going to teach. For you to know who you are. And then help you bring out what is on the inside. So when your teacher has taught you well to know who you are, then there is that spiritual boldness and courage to live it out. Titus was one of the young ace of the Apostle Paul. Was also a pastor. He left him in crate so that he would straighten what he left unfinished. He was to shield the new converts from the people Paul described as mere talkers and deceivers who teach things they ought not to teach. But they taught it for the sake of this honest gain. He was also to move them away from the custom and behavior of the Cretans, who were supposed to be liars, and then move them towards the holy calling, because we, they are a holy people. But that movement has to do with teaching, teaching them who they are. Jesus said, "Go out into the world, baptize, save, teach them, teach them." So let's go to Titus chapter 2. I'll just quickly run through this one and then we'll pray. Titus 2, verse 1. If we can project it, then we'll be engaging the scripture together. You must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. Teach. Teach sound doctrine. Don't just teach any philosophy. Teach sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self control, sound in faith, in love, in endurance. Now, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderous or addicted with much wine, but to teach what is good. Now, He's talking about how to teach in the church. He was saying that try and group them and teach every category what they need. Now, in this Possessing the Nation agenda, I want us to be grouping the nurses. Put all the doctors together. Put those in the judiciary. Teach those in the judiciary, the lawyers. Teach them the judges among us. Teach them how not to take bribe. Teach them that they should be able to advocate for the poor. Teach them that they must move away from this honest game. Teach. These are a holy people, a people of God. But if you don't teach them, they will become like them. So teach the groups so that you release them and they will change their sphere. Teach the nurses how not to be so callous. Teach them to have the heart of Florence Nightingale. Teach them. They shouldn't just go do nursing because of their pests. But they should love human beings. Teach them. Teach the older men to be temperate. Worthy of respect. Self-control. If you go to a country like Ghana. Those who are teachers. The best of them are in the public schools. 
but the worst of students and people are found in the public school. All of them are studying. That is where you go and meet teachers who have master's degree and all that. They are teaching in the basic schools. They'll go to school anytime they want and they leave anytime they desire. At the close of the month, they will be in queue. They will go and take the little money they never worked for. And most of them go to church on Sunday. Teach them. Teach them. Teach the groups. Likewise, teach the older women. That is verse 3, please. To be reverent in the way they live. Not to be slanderous or addicted to much wine. But to teach what is good. That they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children. Mothers who are here, teach your younger women. Teach them how to cook. Teach them. You see, some, some of you, your children will come now, they rattle English. She doesn't know how to cook. Teach her how to cook. Teach her how to cook. Now, don't ever think that in a society like this, everybody is in a restaurant. You are making a mistake. You are making a mistake. Teach them how to cook. Teach them how to, how to respect husbands. Teach them how to marry. Don't go and intercept every issue between your daughter and the husband. Teach. Teach the older women so that they can also teach the younger ones how to respect their husbands, how to be at home. Teach. Because we are a people of God. We need to be different. And we need to be taught. Once we are taught and we understand, that boldness and the courage to live it out will come. Teach. Be self-controlled and pure and to be busy at home teach the younger women to be busy at home and to be kind and to be subject to their husbands or spouses so that no one now listen to this which verse is this verse 5 let's read the last sentence those of you who can see ready go so that no one will malign the word of God the reason why we must teach for us to live as the people of God, so that they will be in yang yang kupwa samaya kanongwa samboni biinka. They shouldn't say that you said you are a Christian. Sometimes they have even been reminding you that you are a Christian. But we are people of God. We want to possess nations. Every one of us should be taught, and then we must go out there and live. As the people of God, showing forth the praise of him who loved us and gave himself to us. Verse 6 says that similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. As for young men, encourage them to be self-controlled. That is a challenge of the young man. Teach them they should be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity and seriousness. This one is also going to those of us who teach. He says that when you are teaching, don't come and stand here and behave as if you are Bobo Kala. It's not it's not about making people laugh and telling telling stories. It is about teaching the word of God because you are using this lectern to equip people. Don't stand behind the altar and tell an anti stories. Show seriousness and integrity. I'm not saying that frown your face and be stamping on the ground. But show seriousness. Show integrity in your teaching. And show seriousness. And soundness of speech. That cannot be condemned. So that those who oppose you may be ashamed. Because they have nothing bad to say about us. When you are at your workplace, work hard. Don't leave the job there when you have not finished doing it and then go home. When people are saying you are lazy, what are you going to say? 
you'll be disgracing Christ. You should watch like that they will have nothing bad to say about you. Verse 9. Teach slaves. See? The slaves in the church at that time. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything. To try to please them, not to talk back to them. And not to steal from them. But to show that they can be fully trusted. Now, Let's read that one from so the last bit. So that, can we read together? Ready, go. So that in every way, they will make the teaching about God, our Savior, what? Attractive. In any way. They will make the teaching of God, our Savior, what? Attractive. We have to show forth his praise. They should come and ask you, please. Which church do you, do, do, you, do you go to? One day, Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. His story was just simple. I, I know that you come from heaven. Because no one can do these things that you do. Except the Lord is with him. Jesus looked at him and said, Do you want to be born again? That is to say that if you want to become like me, the door is be born again. And those of us who are born again, the Nicodemuses should come to us to ask us, where do you get all this wisdom from, this grace, so that the teaching about Christ will be attractive. Verse 11 says that, for the grace of God, that brings salvation has appeared to all men. This grace, it says, verse 12, it teaches what teaches? The grace that you have received. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Sometimes people feel that, hey, nowadays it's not easy to be righteous. The Bible says in this present age. Daniel did it in his time. We can do it in our time. Daniel, a man born of a woman, they were seeking fault from him. And the Bible said they could not find any fault. I challenge you to that. I challenge you to that. Let them put you on a stage. Let them seek some fault. Jesus said, how many of you convict me of sin? If you are a follower of Christ, then I challenge you. Some people say to air is human. Don't mind them. Be holy. That is the standard. Don't settle for to err is human. It teaches. While we wait for the blessed hope, now, as let's live that kind of life because we are wasting for what? The blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God. I like that. And Savior Jesus Christ. Now, this verse is part of the team test. Verse 14. Who gave himself to us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own. Eager to do what is good. We are a people that are God's very own. We should be eager to do what, what is good. In school, at home, at your workplace, on the bus, in the car, in church, everywhere. A people that are God's very own, sealed with the promise Holy Spirit, eager to do what is good. Eager to say sorry. Eager to say, please forgive me. Eager to tell a husband, I'm sorry. Eager to tell a wife, please, mom, forgive me. I got to tell the child, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know what I've done to you is wrong. My son, forgive me. It got to do what is good. It got to wake up in the morning like Jesus. Lift the Bible and call the family together around the altar and study the Bible together. Pray together. It got to do what is good. There are some of us who are married to elders and some elders who are married to dicknesses, but the children don't have any idea about morning devotion. 
So you have left your home ajar and the devil has entered. Today when you go home, smoke him out. Those days, there was morning and evening prayers. When morning and evening prayers decrease, divorce rate ascended. Let us bring God back to our home. He is better than anything that you can give your children. We are a people of God. We are a people of God. Maybe you are working for someone. Work with all your heart. Don't just work because of pounds. Work as if you are working for God. Let me bring this last quote and I'll rest my voice. Colossians 3, verse 23. Shall we read together? Shall we stand up, please, every one of us, if you can? Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. If you belong to this new creation, whatever you do, Work at it as working for the Lord, not for men. Let's move to the next verse if you have. Since you know that you receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord. If you drive a bus, work at it as if you are working for the Lord, not for the government of England. No. Whatever you do, it is the Lord you are serving.